What's up guys and welcome to another episode of the Crack of Pack series. Today we are opening up a pack of Apocalypse. I don't uh, really remember what the best cards in this set are to be honest. I know there's a few that are pretty good, but I don't think that there's a ton of value in this set. Uh, that being said, it's still really fun to open these and of course we are going to go through this uh, as if it's a draft scenario. So we'll hopefully be able to determine what our first round draft pick would be. Uh, I did not draft during this time, so I don't know like what the archetypes are or anything like that. So we're going to be learning this together. Uh, our first card here is Quicksilver Dagger. It's an enchant creature for one, a blue, and a red. Uh, the enchanted creature has tap it, and this creature deals one damage to target player. You also draw a card. Uh, I seem to remember this card being very, very overpowered. Uh, so the big thing here is that you get to draw a card. Obviously pinging the opponent is also quite good if you stick this on a blocker of some kind, something that's just going to stick on the field for a while. Uh, and then you can start pinging your opponent at the end of their turn while also drawing an extra card. That's fantastic. Uh, I imagine that this is a pretty awesome card. It is two colors, uh, and I do believe, though, that's pretty common in this set, so I don't think that that's out of the norm. Uh, I normally don't like enchant creatures, but you guys, in this instance, I think it's definitely worth it. So, uh, so far, actually, a pretty good open. Uh, Kavu Glider is a 2-1 for 2 and a blue, or excuse me, 2 and a red. Uh, you can pay a white, and it gets plus 0, plus 1 until the end of the turn, and then you can pay a blue, and it gains flying until the end of the turn. Uh, this is only, like, okay. Uh, I don't mind it too much, but it's a very expensive and cost, uh, inefficient card, I should say, because it is just a 2-1 for 3 initially. Uh, it's gonna be very, very easy to kill. Obviously, you can sink some mana into this and make it a little bit better. Uh, but it's not actually boosting its power, it's just making it a little bit tougher to kill. And it does make it evasive, which is definitely on the more higher end, uh, I would say it's definitely a good ability, but you have to pay the mana every single time just to make it evasive. So, not super stoked on this. Kavus were pretty popular in this set, if I remember uh, correctly, but I don't know if this is by any means a flagship Kavu, so. Uh, Helianot is a 1-2 for 2 and a white. It has flying, and then you can pay 1 and tap it and add 1 mana of any color to your mana pool. I would actually imagine that this card is pretty good in this set. Uh, again, multicolor th seems to be the theme, uh, and so being able to efficiently filter your lands into a different color is actually going to be really helpful. I also like that this literally filters a land. It's not costing extra mana just to filter out one mana. Uh, a lot of times we, we see that. I know there's an artifact right now that just came out uh, reprinted, but in Core 2020, where you pay two mana of any, of any color, and then you get one mana of any color out. Obviously, that's inefficient. Uh, this, you do have to tap the creature, which isn't ideal, but uh, it still is pretty good. Still like the dagger, obviously, more. I think there's a lot more value to be had there, but uh, this is actually a really good card, in my opinion. I think that's fine. <laughs> Uh, Squeeze Embrace is an enchant creature for uh, a red and a white. The creature gets plus two, plus two, and when the creature is put into a graveyard, return it to its owner's hand. Uh, I actually think this is okay. This kind of gets around the two for one issue that I usually have with enchant creatures by putting the creature back into your hand. Uh, it also is pretty efficient for only two mana. You're getting plus two, plus two, uh, and you're saving the creature a little bit. You're getting that two for one value off of it. Uh, so I actually kind of like this. Um, I still don't like it more than the dagger. I think that dagger just represents so much card advantage as well as just incidental damage uh, that it's very, very hard to pass up. But this is not a bad card by any means. Uh, Phyrexian Rager is a 2-2 two -two for 2 and a black. When it comes into play, you draw a card and lose one life. Very, very solid 3-drop creature. It's not amazing by any means, but it does help you dig through your deck a little bit. Uh, getting a 2-2 two -two for 3 is not amazing, obviously, but getting a 2-2 two -two for 3 that also, also draws you a card is great. Uh, unfortunately, you do have to lose a life in the process, but that's not really a huge deal. On, on turn 3, you're probably not super close to dead. Hopefully, you're not super close to dead in a draft environment. Um, and if you are, maybe this isn't the card for you, but uh, uh, I really like this, actually. Um, definitely not more than the dagger, but this is a very solid creature regardless. <clears throat> Lay of the Land is a sorcery for one green. Search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and then you shuffle your library. The key here is that this does actually help you fix your mana. Uh, you can play it on turn one or any subsequent turn after that, assuming you have green, uh, and it filters into whatever color you need. You can pick out a basic land of any color, 
which makes this a lot better, especially in this multicolor set. Again, I, I think this is a good card, but it's not better than the dagger for sure. This is just something that if you're in green and you know you're going to be in splashing multiple colors or something like that, you'll definitely want one or two of these just to help that process. Angel Fire Crusader is a 2-3 three for 3 and a white. You can pay, pay 1 red, excuse me, and it gets plus 1 plus 0 until the end of the turn. Again, this has the same issue as the Kavu. It's a perfectly okay card, assuming you can pump it up a few times. Uh, but you're investing 4 mana on the onset, and then per turn you have to invest a few red mana just to make it work. I find that that's probably not very good. Uh, I think, obviously, the power level of creatures during this time was a little bit dimmed down in comparison to what we're seeing nowadays, but uh, I, I don't think that this is a very reasonable card. Quagmire Druid is a 2-2 for 2 and a black. You can pay a green and tap it, sacrifice a creature, and destroy target enchantment. This is like a serviceable 3-drop. I don't think that this is amazing. Uh, being able to destroy target enchantment does actually, I think, have legs in this set in particular because we do see a lot of enchant creatures and things like that. Generally speaking, it's much more of a sideboard card or just incidental tech. Uh, obviously, if you're considering your curve and you realize you need some 3-drops, throw this in there and then you've got actual built-in uh, enchantment hate versus, you know, obviously just running it into the ground. So... I don't mind it for that. It's definitely not better than the dagger in general, but it is actually an okay card. Uh, Strength of Night uh, is an instant for two and a green. It has kicker of one black, so you can pay an additional black as you play it. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until the end of the turn. If, the, if you paid the kicker cost, zombies you control get an additional plus two, plus two until the end of the turn. This is obviously great for a go-wide strategy. Love the art on this as well. Uh, perfectly serviceable uh, to finish off a game or something like that if you are in that go-wide strategy. If you're in zombies, this is ideal because obviously giving them all plus two plus two is pretty good. But I would much rather be in those archetypes before picking up this card. Uh, it's not the kind of card that you pick up first and then try and make it work. Uh, Jaded Response is an instant for one and a blue. Counter target spell if it shares a color with a creature you control. Obviously, it's going to be easier for cards to share colors in this set because a lot of them are multicolored. Uh, however, I'm not a huge fan of this. It is very efficient in that it is only two mana, but uh, I'd rather be playing creatures on two and trying to get some more board advantage uh, than picking up a card like this. Uh, Minotaur Tactician is a 1-1 one, one for 3 and a red with haste. Uh, it gets plus 1, plus 1 as long as you control a white creature, and it also gets plus 1, plus 1 as long as you control a blue creature. So here we see, again, that multicolor theme coming out. This gets a big power boost if you've got multiple different colored creatures out. Uh, this obviously focusing on white and blue. Uh, so you're probably going to be in some kind of Jeskai deck if you're running this. If you're not, I don't think that this is worth it. Uh, by any means. I think a 1-1 one, one for 4 with haste is quite bad. Uh, if you can pump it once, it's okay, but still, honestly, really, in my opinion, pretty bad. If you can get all three, uh, or all two, uh, excuse me, pumps out of this, I think it's worth it. It's a it's a three mana, or a four mana, excuse me, 3-3 three, three with haste. That's pretty good, but again, you really have to be in that color uh, combination already. I don't think that this is worth taking first. <coughs> Uh, here we see a split card, which is obviously a mechanic of this set. Uh, we have Order and Chaos. Order says instant for three and a white remove target attacking creature from the game. Uh, Chaos is an instant for two and a red. Creatures can't block this turn. Uh, I actually really like the Order on this side more than the Chaos. Uh, Chaos is good if you're in an aggressive strategy for sure. Order is better if you're losing the game or if somebody is attacking you. Uh, you're able to obviously destroy or remove from play, I should say, target creature, which is great. Both of these are pretty good. Uh, I like that it adds that flexibility. Still don't like it more than the dagger, to be honest. Uh, I just find that dagger providing so much card advantage is very, very good. Uh, Squeeze Revenge is a sorcery for one, a blue, and a red. Choose a number, flip a coin that many times or until you lose a flip whichever comes first. If you win all the flips, draw two cards for each flip. So this is obviously a bit of a gambling card. You obviously want to get as many positive flips as possible. That way you can draw as many cards as possible. However, uh, you run the risk of then losing too many flips 
uh, if you if you uh, if you go for too high of a number, which means you don't draw any cards. So bit of a gamble there. I don't like cards like this. They're just too inconsistent. Uh, obviously, you want your cards to be reliable, uh, and this definitely is not. <clears throat> Uh, Grave Defiler is a 2-1 for 3 and a black. When it comes into play, reveal the top 4 cards of your library. Put all zombie cards revealed this way into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library. You can also pay 1 and a black and regenerate it. Uh, this is a very, very good uh, zombie card. This is definitely a flagship card for the zombie deck. You want as many of these, I would say, as possible just to fill up your hand uh, with as many zombies as you can get from your deck. So... I really like this. Uh, I I don't know if it's better than the dagger or not. We'll see what the rare has. So, uh, Death Grasp is a sorcery. X, a white and a uh, black, excuse me, deals X damage to target creature or player and you gain X life. Honestly, this is really hard to pass up. This is just such good value. Uh, being able to nuke either the opponent or a creature and then drain that to your own life total is fantastic. So, Honestly, that seems like an easy pick to me. It's just such an efficient card that it's really hard to pass up. A lot of good stuff in this pack with the Grave Defiler as well as the Dagger, though. Um, and honestly, if it hadn't been for this card, I don't know which one I would have picked. Uh, both of them are very good, so I could honestly see either one. However, uh, if you uh, have a disagreement or if you have a qualm with what I have said in this pack, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below as well. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.